This video is for Wright-Patterson Mahjong players. Have you ever scheduled a game and your players have backed out and you're left with two players? I'm sure you've had to cancel that game because this is a four-player game. Well, you don't have to cancel anymore. In 2015, Gladys Grad of Mahjong Madness created Siamese Mahjong, which is a two-player, two-handed game based on the National Mahjong League rules. I've been playing for about a year, and it's been really challenging and a lot of fun. So I thought, why not take those rules and modify them for play with Wright-Patterson style? So I had a chat with Gladys, and she approved my use of Siamese Mahjong for Wright-Patterson style. And I wanted to share it with you. You can download the rules from my website. Just go to MahjongCentral.com and click on Styles. From there, you're going to scroll down to the bottom. And on the right, there's a PDF called Wright-Patterson Siamese Mahjong. Just click on that and you can download this one-page PDF with the rules. This assumes that you know how to play the game. If you want to learn how to play, there are, there are links below the video where you can watch a lesson, you can watch videos of all the hands, and some Charleston modeling so you can get to know the mechanics of the game. If you watch all those videos and you want to play two-handed, come on back and finish this video because I'm also going to have a demo so that you can see how Siamese Mahjong is played for a Wright-Patterson style. So I'm going to read through these rules. So bear with me as I do this. This version was created by Gladys Grad in 2015. I have her website here. You can click on that if you want to see the original rules. These guidelines were modified by me for Wright-Patterson Mahjong rules with permission from Gladys. The object of the game is for each player to attempt to complete two valid hands from the Wright-Patterson Mahjong rulebook. The game ceases when one player declares two Mahjongs or when the tiles from the wall have been used. These are the adjustments that you're going to need to make. Number one, the Charleston is omitted. Number two, chows must be self-drawn unless it's your winning tile. Number three, East is not paid double if they win, and they do not pay double if they lose. Each player, or number four, should have a pair of colored dice so that they can mark their racks with the seat wind. East will be one, South will be two, west will be three, north will be four on the dice. The dealer will be playing for east and south. The opponent will be playing for west and north. That'll all come into play if you ever want to play a hand with your own or prevailing wind. And also it may come into play if you decide to score based on Wright-Patterson rules. Here's how you set up the game and how to play. Place all the tiles and racks from one mahjong set on the table. Each player sitting across from each other will need two racks. There is an option. Gladys had special racks created for Siamese mahjong and I have the link to them right here. I would use two standard racks for the non-player walls so that you can use those to curtsy the walls without having any spillage. Building the walls, breaking the wall, building the flower wall, and identifying the prevailing wind should all be done as normal. The deal begins with East picking the first set of four tiles. Their opponent picks four tiles and so on until each player has 24 tiles on their racks. To end the deal, East picks a final four tiles, and then their opponent picks three tiles. The results should be with East having 28 tiles and their opponent having 27 tiles. 
players may arrange their tiles on both of their racks as they choose. So while the hands are concealed, you can use those tiles interchangeably however you want. East declares flowers and exchanges from the flower wall are made. East discards the 28th tile to begin the pick and discard phase of the game. The opponent picks their tile from the wall, then discards, and so on. When claiming a discard to complete a set, the exposure must be placed on the correct rack. Once the turn ends, the exposure must remain where placed. We're going to talk about dead hands. Exposures for two different hands cannot be placed on the same rack. If this happens and it's noticed by the opponent, the hand will be declared dead. The player with the dead hand may continue playing the second hand on the second rack, ignoring the dead hand. If a player is declared dead for two hands, the game ceases. If their opponent has not yet declared a mahjong, the offending player will pay the opponent the value of a double limit hand. If their opponent has declared a mahjong, the offending player will pay their opponent the value of a triple limit hand. Here's how you declare a mahjong. It's pretty standard actually, except for one little bit. When a mahjong is declared, the hand is exposed and verified. That's standard. The player discards and the game proceeds with the next player. That's the tricky bit. So, and that's one reason why you start out with 28 and 27 tiles. So you're gonna be left with 13 tiles for your second hand, hopefully. Because again, the goal is to win two Mahjongs because that's when the game is over. Let's talk about scoring. There are two options for payout. The first option is using the scoring in the Wright-Patterson rule book and using Wright-Patterson colored chips as described in the rule book. Each player counts the score for their winning and incomplete hands to get a total score. The player with the lowest score will pay the player with the highest score the difference between the scores. For option two, Players receive payment for declared mahjongs only. Incomplete hands do not get scored. Then we have some actual payouts here in both coins and points if you choose not to play for money. For a bouquet, which is either all seasons or all flowers, basically one through four of one color, you get 25 cents or 25 points, and that is an immediate payout from the opponent. A single limit value is going to be either 25 cents or 25 points. A double limit value will be 50 cents or 50 points. A triple limit value will be 75 cents and 75 points. Let's look at the game results. For wall games, Players will contribute 25 cents or 25 points to a pot for the player with the next Mahjong. The pot will increase with each wall game. If the pot remains by the end of the playing session, just divvy out whatever's in that pot to the players. If one player has one Mahjong, they get the value of the hand. Each, if each player has one Mahjong, the difference between the values of the hands is what is, is paid. So the lower scoring hand will pay the higher scoring hand the difference. If one player has two Mahjongs declared separately, that the example of that would be, let's say I win on a hand and then I discard to continue with my second hand and then later in the game, I declare a second Mahjong. That's two separate Mahjongs. When this occurs, the value of the hand for, you get the value of the hand for the first Mahjong. You get double the value of the hand for the second Mahjong. If the opponent has a Mahjong, the value of their hand will offset the debt. 
you can also have one player with two mahjongs declared simultaneously. This is called a double mahjong. So that would be where a player chooses to withhold a winning hand so that they can have a winning hand for their second hand and they would declare both mahjongs at the same time. When that occurs, they get double the value for both hands. If their opponent has a mahjong, the value of their hand will offset the debt. That is how you play Siamese mahjong for Wright Patterson style. If you decide to try this out, come back and tell me about it in the comment section. And if you have any recommendations on how to improve this style, let me know. I would love to collaborate. The next video is going to be a demonstration of how to set up the game, how to play, and how to score.